Sandman here. This is lecture two of my instructional video series. Today I'm going to be discussing lock tolerances and binding friction. I'm first going to start out with volume one, Locks, Safes, and Security, written by Mark Weber Tobias. First edition was 1971. Second edition was the year 2000. On page 551, we can read, why is it difficult to pick a lock? Why locks are easy or difficult to pick is covered in detail later in this chapter. The short answer primarily involves tolerance errors. If a lock and its moving components plug in pins maintain a very high tolerance, meaning little space between parts, then the lock will be more resistant to manipulation. If all chamber holes have very close to perfect centerline alignment, ever more difficulty will be encountered. If security tumblers are added to the equation, the mechanism may present a serious obstacle to bypass. As the reader will learn, the question involves many complex issues. Understanding them will provide the maximum opportunity to successfully open the lock. In this particular diagram, if we were to take a card, we can see that the pinholes of this plug are not aligned with one another. Furthermore, if we look at uh, image number B, we can see that they're even further skewed. Tolerance. Tolerance errors are cumulative in effect, resulting from many factors. In high quality security related locks, the plug and shell is made from brass bar stock or nickel silver. The pin chambers are drilled individually and reamed for a close fit. In contrast, poor quality knockoffs such as produced in Asia are less expensive with commensurate poor tolerances. Maintaining tolerance is costly. There are no shortcuts. Cheap locks will greatly display the following characteristics. Have too much chamfer on the top and bottom of the pins. Use die cast plugs and bodies with poor chamber, chamber alignment. Have oversized pinhole diameters. Allow too much tolerance between the shell and plug. If brass is utilized, it will be of inferior quality to number 58, which is typically used in quality locks. The following tolerance errors are typical in pin tumbler mechanism and will contribute to the ability to pick or impression the lock. The plug and shell have a tolerance of five thousandths. Loss of bottom metal of keyway due to broaching. Flat at top of plug between five thousandths and fifteen thousandths. Chamfering pin chamber with a reamer or drill bit. Chamfering a pin. Pin chambers not all same diameter. Pin chamber center hole lines not equal. Concentricity of chambers roundness. Pin diameter and concentricity of tumblers. Master keying can create up to 2,000 or more shear lines because of cross keying. Locks can be picked due to cumulative tolerance errors resulting from required clearance between moving parts. The poorer the tolerance between the moving components, the greater the opportunity for setting pins at shear line. There is always a sliding allowance or tolerance. Any part that will slide past another moving component must be separated by a gap. The space allows the creation of a shear line. The opportunity to exploit that mechanical requirement permits bypass. Variations in alignment of active components caused by imperfections in machining and metal surfaces, drill bit and broach wear, imprecise rounding and other production stages make it possible to bind pins and other parts during picking. Tolerance errors occur at several critical points. We're going to stop there. And now I'm going to reference The Picking Book by Jerry Levine, published in 1988. On page six, we read, for any lock to operate properly, the basic design must permit sufficient space between the outer diameter of the plug and the inner diameter of the housing. There must be sufficient space added for the plug to move within the housing. In addition to this space, there are several other provided for smooth operation of the lock. For example, sufficient space must be between the outer diameter of the pins and the diameter of the pin chambers in a pin tumbler lock. For wafer locks, sufficient space is needed between the wafers and the plug. 
Wafer sidebar locks require sufficient space between the wafers, the sidebar, the plug, and the housing. These spaces enable a tumbler to bind, making the picking procedure possible. Every lock type out of necessity has these spaces built into its basic design. The dimensions of these spaces are part of a lock's overall tolerances. Tolerance for our purpose is the amount and variation of the space remaining between the parts of a lock when they are assembled. Generally, the tighter the tolerance is, the less space, the more difficult the lock is to pick. All locks must have at least a minimal tolerance for smooth operation. For if a lock had one one millionth for the overall tolerance, the lock parts would wear out very quickly. Key duplicating would be almost impossible and the operational life of the lock and keys would be minimal. Most significant would be the outrageously expensive cost of the lock itself. Precision costs money. The tighter the tolerances, the greater the expense. A number of high security lock manufacturers increase the security value of their locks by minimizing the overall tolerances. One of the most important tolerance dimensions for a cylindrical lock is the distance between the outer dimension of the plug and the inner dimension of its shell or housing. A one half inch plug will not fit into a one half inch hole. The greater the space between the two parts, usually the easier it is to pick open a lock. The tighter the tolerance is, the less space, the more difficult the picking procedure required to open the lock. A good quality cylindrical lock will have a built-in tolerance of approximately plus or minus one and a half thousandths of an inch to three thousandths of an inch between the diameter of the plug and the bore of the shell. A lesser quality cylindrical lock will have as much as plus or minus twelve thousandths of an inch tolerance. A lock built to this specification would have a plug which could move up and down within the housing. Let's stop there. So this is a 3D printed model of a lock with the plug, the shell or housing, a key, and the key pins. These particular key pins in this lock, there's four of them. As I apply rotational force with my right hand, I'm going to find that certain pins will bind first due to the misalignment of the, the pinholes drilled into the top of the lock. As I go to manipulate the key pins using a lifter pick with the method of single pin picking, I am going to determine this particular lock's binding order while using clockwise rotation. So again, I'm applying clockwise rotational force and I'm going to feel each individual pin with my lifter hook, and I'm going to determine that one of the pins is binding. That is the first pin that I'm going to lift within my lock cylinder. As I apply in rotational force, I am allowing that pin to meet the shear line separating the key pin from the driver pin. I will then begin my, uh, reassume my my examination by feeling for the springy pins versus binding pins. In this instance, pin four is now the new binding pin. I will feel that pin set and I will get a slight rotation in my plug and I will then resume finding the next binding pin. Pin one is springy, pin two is set, pin three is binding. Now that pin three is set, I can finish picking the lock. Pin one is now binding. And I will get full rotation within my plug. Alternatively, if I were to apply counterclockwise rotational force using a turning tool, I will find that the binding order will be completely different. In this particular instance, the binding order happens to be starting with pin number one. Upon further examination, I see that pin number three is now binding. Now pin number four. And finally, pin number two. Alternatively, if I were to use top of keyway rotational force with a turning tool, I'm going to close the tolerance gap at the top of the plug between the plug and the lock housing or shell. What that's going to do is it's going to kind of create what's, what I would consider a seesaw or a teeter-totter effect. By applying top of keyway tension, I'm going to close the tolerance at the top, 
and I'm going to open the tolerance more in the back of the lock near the top. This is why lock pickers using the single pin picking method while using top of keyway tension will notice that the rear pins will bind before the front pins. Alternatively, if I were to take my turning tool and place it at the bottom of my keyway and apply the same type of force, in this particular instance, clockwise rotational force, I will close the tolerance between the bottom of the plug and my lock housing, and I'm going to open the tolerance in the top of my plug. So I'm bringing the plug down, and there is a higher chance that I'm going to see pins bind in the front of my plug.